Electric cars, electric trains and electric ships are all the rage right now, and this begs the question, why haven't we seen any electric planes yet? Electric planes would mean zero carbon in the atmosphere, cheaper plane tickets and airports that are a lot quieter. So why aren't they here yet? Well, it turns out that electric planes are a lot harder to make than their land and sea counterparts, but avionics companies might be a lot closer to perfecting these planes than we expect. Today on Super Freaky Science, we'll be looking at how electric planes are the future of flight. Why are there no electric planes in the sky? Yet. Electric cars are making their way onto our roads and highways, with more and more automobile companies switching most, if not all, their gas-powered vehicles to hybrids or completely electric cars. And finally, it appears that the aviation industry is taking a page out of this book and is making strides to get the first commercial electric planes into the skies. Currently, the aviation industry has more carbon footprint than the automobile sector, which is expected to double in the next 30 years as more planes enter the skies. While these new developments are promising, bear in mind that converting a car or train from being run by an engine to being powered by a battery is a much simpler task than doing the same to an airplane. Swapping out a combustion engine for a battery pack will almost certainly increase the total mass of the car or train as today's batteries weigh a lot more than their engine equivalents. But this isn't much of a problem as landed vehicles are grounded, and the added weight can be offset by the ground on which they run. For example, if a 500-pound engine is replaced by a 1,200-pound battery, the vehicle would undoubtedly become heavier and will require more power to move at average speeds. Regardless, the vehicle will still move as the added mass isn't entirely shouldered by the car, but also the earth on which it moves. So in other words, the heavy vehicle will move at average speeds with the added power of the battery. Sadly, the same can't be said for airplanes, as the only support they have is the air in which they glide. As an airplane engines are replaced with batteries, the said batteries would have to be at least £2,000 heavier than the engine it would be replacing to generate the same amount of power. The airplane does not have the earth to offset the added weight, so more power would be required to lift the airplane off the ground and maintain flight. This means more batteries for more power and more power to lift the added batteries, and the cycle goes on and on. A small fighter jet using batteries would require at least the power of four other jets to lift it into the air and maintain flight. The weight and power of batteries, despite being a major problem, is not the only problem associated with building electric planes. The distance flights cover as opposed to car rides is also another factor. A straight flight can cover a longer distance than a car running on a full tank of gas due to its larger fuel tanks and the altitude at which the airplane flies. This means airplanes require a lot more stored energy on board than the landed counterpart to make a single trip which translates to more high-powered batteries and more weight on the planes. The specific or total mass an airplane can handle varies with each aircraft and is crucial to the safety of the flight, which is why airlines meticulously weigh all luggage brought on board. NASA's effort into building electric planes NASA has always been at the forefront of innovative flight in the US, and it seems they have been hard at work trying to crack down on how to build planes with zero carbon emissions. The space agency, with the help of private companies and airplane manufacturers, is testing out innovative designs and technology geared towards solving the problems of battery weight and power output needed to fly an electric plane. The tests will be carried out at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center, located just north of Los Angeles. Manager of Advanced Air Support Transport Technology at NASA's New Glenn Research Center, Jim Heidman, said industry used to scoff at the idea of electric planes, but that's no longer the case. They are very interested in this. Noting the advances the agency is making towards building fully functional electric planes, but for now, the agency believes hybrid planes will rely on batteries and jet fuel 
will be the first to grace the skies before all electric planes make their debut. These hybrids would use jet fuel to power and charge the batteries mid flight, but at smaller proportions and reduced rates than a fully fueled powered plane. Hybrid planes can also be designed to use their batteries during takeoff and landing to reduce carbon emissions near airports. NASA has spent the last decade developing the batteries and designs for its very own electric plane, a smaller two-seater named X-57. The X-57 is a small jet-sized electric plane designed to carry just a pilot and a single passenger. It's capable of covering a range of 100 miles with top speeds of 172 miles per hour. According to the project manager for flight demonstrations and capabilities at Armstrong Center, Brent Cobley, the experimental plane requires about 200 kilowatts of power from its battery packs to achieve takeoff and maintain flight. This amount of electricity is more than enough to power 100 houses and would have to somehow be packed into an 850-pound lithium-ion battery pack. The technology is still in development stages and undergoing high-voltage ground testing at the center. The design and build of the battery packs are intended to minimize weight while ensuring maximum power output for the X57 and have inspired new battery packaging and welding techniques as well as new methods of heat energy extraction. More electric planes are being developed NASA aren't the only ones trying to get a head start on electric planes. Private companies have all been trying their hands at building their own versions. Solar Impulse, a Swiss company, was the first to design and fly a fully operational solar-powered plane. The single-seater aircraft can take off using just solar-generated power and stay airborne for almost 36 hours. It made its first international flight in May of 2011, setting the pace for all other small-range electric aircraft. Another avionics manufacturer, Pipistrel, a Slovenian company, also took a shot of their own by manufacturing one of the first all-electric airplanes. The two-seater uses 50 kilowatt electric motor with an electric propulsion system certified to be used for training in flight schools. While electric planes are still in the innovative stage and might be a few years away, there are also other alternatives to reducing the carbon footprint of planes. Studies are being carried out to investigate the use of alternative fuel sources such as biofuels and hydrogen. Biofuels derived from the chemical decomposition of plants and algae have been used in commercial flights in the past, although they were never widely adopted. Studies to improve the sustainability of these biofuels without a direct impact on nature and food sources are currently underway, with impressive results so far. Hydrogen is also another fuel alternative to fossil fuels that can significantly reduce the carbon emissions of airplanes. Hydrogen has a relatively low density and contains up to three times more energy compared to kerosene. These planes could greatly change the carbon emissions in our atmosphere while significantly reducing the cost of flights as well. What will a future with electric planes be like? $50 plane tickets and zero emission runways? Let us know what you think in the comments section. We'll see you in the next video.